Good Friday morning, everyone, and welcome to the Art and Jennifer Show. You know, we have, uh, we're going to have a great conversation here uh, because we're sitting next uh, to a man who chased his dream and caught up with it. Um, James Ross, also uh, the, the man who started J. Ross TV, uh, is living his dream. He has over, well, he has millions of followers on his YouTube channel, and so we're going to talk about that. James, good morning. Explain to our listeners what J. Ross TV is all about. Oh, hey, good morning. How you good doing, Miss Jennifer Art? My man, Ethan. Uh, J. Ross TV was a concept that came to me back in the day. Matter of fact, it was just a blue, you know, just something stupid. I used to practice my bass guitar in the basement, and I put it on YouTube, and people were like, man, you suck. Boy, you're terrible. <laughs> but I have thick skin, and I love a challenge. So I just kept practicing and practicing, and I thought to myself one day, I said, man, I need to record other people. And maybe that'll be cool, you know. Then maybe we can uh, highlight the up-and-coming cats in the music field. So just over the course of time, I think it's been 13 years now, went from zero to 14.8 million viewers with right around 7,300 videos on YouTube and my uh, Facebook and everything present is cool. But what J. Ross TV has done for me, it's, it's opened so many doors, man. It's so many doors because I've met all my musical heroes. You know, I've been in the Beehive. I've sat and played video games with Bruno Mars. I've danced with J-Lo, you know. I done backed that thing up with Fantasia. You know? Oh, hey, I gotta, hey, I gotta uh, make sure I do my Ebonics thing for Miss Jennifer. You have to explain stuff to her. So I danced with Fantasia. Oh, good. I'll look at that. Yes, ma'am. So you go to concerts to interview these people, James? Well, what happened, well, back in the day when I was first starting out, I couldn't get an interview. I couldn't get, I couldn't get anywhere. It took about a year before I got my first interview, and it was with a uh, five-time Grammy Award winner, Victor Wooten. He's with uh, Bella Fleck and the Flecktones. So he, he, he threw me a bone at Mississippi Nights back in the day. And then since then, it's just grow, growing. So like when people come to town now, they'll call me and say, hey, Jay Ross, we're going to be in town. So you want to come down and get some footage or do the interviews? But I'm also uh, got a thing with Google. You know, Google pays me. Not, en not enough IRS. You know, not enough for you to look at me. So, not, I ain't making that kind of <laughs> <laughs> so so what, what I do is I go in, and like a lot of times, you know, you get bands, but people never notice the equipment that they use, like uh, Fender or, or Les Paul or whatnot. So what I do is I highlight the manufacturers, mm -hmm. and they pay me for the videos. And also I charge for the videos, of course. It's like uh, Jennifer Holiday, you know, she was at the Sheldon Concert Hall. They had me to film her, but then she called and said, uh, uh, she had a TV show coming up, and she needed the videos, and she wanted to just buy the whole package. Once again, R.S., it wasn't that much. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't look at me, you know. But, yeah, so the concept of J. Ross TV came from, I used to go to the concerts. You see the main artist, but I used to always wonder, who's the guy in the back? Man, he killing this instrument. You know, who, the, who are the dancers? Mm -hmm. Nobody knew them. So I decided to highlight the people in the background, and in doing so, it opened up the foreground. Simple as that, you know. What was it like to dance with J Lo? Well, you know I can dance, Miss Jennifer, as you've seen on my videos. You know, you know I don't mind bringing it. You know, I, I twerk with like last night. We was at A List uh, celebration at the Sheldon. Oh, and Art was there, right? That's right. We were together. The voted best anchorman. That's in right. Lewis. But what y'all don't know, Art got a little lit, y'all. <laughs> Or oh, I started twerking. <laughs> His wife didn't see it, but I, 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 wanted, I wanted to film it, but I said, well, I better not get art on this one, you know. But no, but it was just a wonderful thing. There was just a lot of things happened. St. Louis has some of the best musicians in the world. They tour with everybody in the world, but we just don't know who they are, you know. So that's my job. I come to highlight. Mm -hmm. So when we did the television story, you talked about uh, how many concerts you go to how many how many do you go to in a year i average 230 a year sometimes i do three or four a day depending on who's in town like tomorrow i've uh, got kim and uh frankie beverly and Mays. and then i turn around leave out that night go to kansas city to get frankie beverly and Mays and stokely from in condition the next day you know but hey i love it i love it what do you think of my songs of the day Miss Jennifer, your songs suck. <laughs> I mean, I love you, nothing but love for you, but your songs suck. 
<laughs> you, you gotta get Patty LaBelle. Uh, what about Charlie Pride? Come on now, Miss Jennifer. <laughs> I'm not even a hundred, but yeah, but you you gotta get better music. Okay. You know, okay. get Nicki Minaj or uh, play a little. I'll look at J. Ross TV and see what I can pick up. Well, you, you, you will. I don't know. We got a lot of twerkers on there. <laughs> you know? And your son, James, is in the studio. Yeah, I got my little son, James, As third. we are speaking, so right. he's following in your footsteps? No, James not really a big music guy. He likes sports, you know? But we'll get him in the family business, because <laughs> if I croak, somebody got somebody to pick it up. So this is your full-time job? Oh, no, no I own uh, Ross Landscaping Solutions as well. But we don't want the IRS to be looking. <laughs> just, just keep it on. You seem obsessed with the IRS, James. Man, I know, I know, I know friends. <laughs> I know wealthy friends, but the IRS didn't turn them loose. So you know. you've been talking to Wesley Snipes, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> who have you not interviewed? Who is on your list of people you'd like to interview? Musicians, mm -hmm. uh, or otherwise. Well, I got I got an interview supposed to be lined up with Dave Stewart, Worldwide Technology. Mm -hmm. I got him before, you know. But well, matter of fact, we were out at the uh, Lamborghini dealership. He was buying a couple of Lambos, and I went out there and I filmed it. So I was supposed to get him. After that, for uh, musicians, I've gotten pretty much everybody. You know, I've been in the room with you two. How about Diana Ross? I got her before, mm -hmm. right? But she's coming back on the twenty fifth. Right. What was she like? You know, uh, you know how you throw your hair around, <laughs> whip your hair. And, uh, then you can I sing to you? Yeah, you can sing. We pay for that. You know, but no. How about Cher? Nah, not your time. Not with not without not without what is her husband name? Sonny. Sonny Bono. Yeah. yeah, not without him, but uh, sure, cool. You <laughs> so know. now you said you were you uh, uh, hooked up with you two. Yeah. Well, what happens is sometimes when when like super bands like that come to town, right? Uh, you make connections over the years and network, so people invite you into the room. So sometimes you're not allowed to say anything. You just can listen to the conversations. But when they speak, you can speak. So you know me, man. I'm, I'm sitting over there like this. Man. I'm just chomping at the bit. Somebody say something, so I can say something. You know, but it never came to that. But just to hear them talk about money. You know, $1.2 billion for a three-year tour package. You know? And then you look at your friends around here and, like, all the local bands. Hey, Art, you be I see you. We be at the bistro and all right. that. So, man, a lot, of, a lot of people don't believe that they can be more than what they are. They, they're afraid to jump. A lot of people are afraid of success. I didn't know that, you know. You know, but that's on them, you know. But but I encourage like all the all the musicians, all the people I know that I hang out with, anywhere. Hey, do not be afraid to jump. You gotta jump. And if you hit the rocks, get up and jump again, because success is not coming to your door. Nobody's knocking on your door. Nobody's giving you nothing. So just go get it. And if you don't get it, at least when right before you croak, when you're on your <laughs> deathbed, and all your friends standing around looking at you crazy, you know, and you can look at him, wait a minute, all right, but, don't, hey, but you know, you can look at him and say, man, I shot my best shot. I left no arrows in the bag. You know, how would you like to get old and then do nothing? So that makes no sense to me. So I, I go to every concert. I meet everybody I can meet. You know, I've sat in the, I sat at the uh, Enterprise Center with the janitors eating pizza, talking about nothing, and I've hung out with the big boys. So, I, I love people, so it's all good. The janitors always know everything. They know everything. Mm -hmm. and, and I, Wait a minute, and all you cats out there, I employ you, don't just look at the big picture. Look at the smaller picture as well. The janitors and security guards got access to everything. They know all the secrets. And they can get you in when you can't get in. So how would you describe your interviewing style? Uh, hood rat. <laughs> Straight up hood rat. Because uh, did you say hood rat? All right, all right, all right. Ebonics translator for Miss Jennifer, y'all. <laughs> 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 what I'm saying is, it's raw, like from the streets, mm -hmm. from the hood. Mm -hmm. Because most of the musicians, they don't want to. You know, when you when you talk to other musicians, like if I talk to, um, I don't know, it don't make uh, Verdine White, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Right. He's, he's in town. I talk to Verdine. They don't want to know what kind of strings he used. You know, they, everybody already know what kind of bass and amp he used. They want to know how do you get from broke to three hundred thousand dollars every three months on residual payments? How did you? What did you do? Who did you know to get you in the door? Which his brother did. Most people don't have brothers in the game, so you have to go out. You have to network. You have to connect. You have to keep doing it. You talk to guys. Like last night, I was talking to my guys and vote for Pedro. You know, the number one uh, party band on the A list. 
and I'm talking to my guys. I'm like, hey, man, uh, what's going on with your Facebook presence? Oh, I'm not on Facebook. Man, you crazy. It's a great tool. That's all it is, a tool. All this is a tool. Instagram, it's a tool. You know, and then if you're in the music game or you guys are anchors, you don't, if you're in the music, you especially don't want plumbers and lawyers and electricians on your page. You want singers, songwriters, promoters, producers. You want to be able to contact them and say, hey, my name is such and such. I'm a small fry. I'm trying to be a big fry. How do I get from the small stage to the big stage? Can you help me? Nine times out of ten, no response. But you keep doing it until one person, just take one person to open the door, and that one person can make you a millionaire. It only take one song. People that write books, it only take one book. You know what I'm saying? But people sit in the house and scared to write stuff, <laughs> worrying about what they mama going to think or their cousins and all that. <laughs> you know, uh, I ain't going to let you see it because uh, I don't want, I don't want it, the feedback. You know, if I'm messing up, tell me I'm messing up so I can fix it and get on to the next one. So that's my philosophy, y'all. So J. Ross TV is basically, basically hood rat TV. So uh, tell our listeners what your uh, website is, and then for people who are hearing about it for the first time, what, what's a real, uh, an interview that you're really proud of that you maybe you would direct them to? Check this one out first. Well, the website is uh, jrosstv.com. If you check it out, it's got 150 million views on it and uh, videos and stuff you can go check out. But as far as the interview, I'm proud of all of them because all of them stupid. You know what I'm saying? Because people, people come from, from so many different areas, you know, so many different viewpoints. So in, in the interview, well, I was interviewing uh, this group. They used to come to St. Louis called Snarky Puppy. They finally blew up. It took them 13 years. You know, they'd come to St. Louis at the Rock House. be five people in the crowd, uh, including me and Beetle Bob. <laughs> but I would shoot the video like it was jam-packed. You know, so finally, when they finally broke, it's cool. So I did an interview, and one of the members is Bill Lawrence. He's an actor from London. He plays piano, so I was talking to him, and he was like, I was like, hey, Bill, how, man, how did you get so funky, man, being a white boy, man? You know, I said, what, what did you practice on? He was like, oh, man, my mom. Just, I was like, your mama was black. You know, stuff like that. <laughs> you know? So where do you get the funk from? <laughs> so, but Miss Jennifer, my audience loves that. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't want like, hey, man, uh, James, uh, you sterile and, uh, you know, your bass guitar. They don't want to hear that. They want to, hey, man, how did you get that? Simple as that. Because everybody, most musicians are vainful people. You have to be because you're selling a product, which is you. Mm -hmm. So you, you walk in billboard. So if you're going to sell it, sell it. <laughs> Find your niche and you sell it. My niche is J. Ross TV. I'm just a regular cat. Don't try to be no uh, better than anybody else. We have no respect to person at J. Ross TV, meaning we'll interview some cat in his basement in Oklahoma who sucked like I did uh, to your favorite, Eric Clapton. You know, so, but yeah, so, man, we just having fun. We enjoying life, man. You know, it's all good. So, when you're talking to people uh, and trying to draw them out, do you go in with a preconceived idea of, the direction that you want the interview to go, or you just let it flow? Not at all, you know. Well, normally I like to ask, though, what your mother and father think about it, you know, because most people catch hell, you know, when they're growing up. The parents don't want them to be musicians, but the passion and their love is so much into it. And you just hear the stories, and I like to ask people, ask people uh, what kind of sacrifices they made, because, like, most of the top musicians sacrificed a lot. You know, they didn't get a chance, they didn't get a chance to play football or baseball, you know, stuff like that. Most of them didn't have girlfriends because all they did was practice. And, you know, that's got to be, for me anyway, that's got to be a sorry life growing up. You know, not to have friends, just constantly practice. And then when you get older, you become a world-renowned musician. But, man, your social skills down. You have no real love in your life. You know, then you're wondering if the woman that loves you love you for your money or your fame. I mean, it's so many different ways. So I just ask dumb questions, man. You know, like like if I'm interviewing you art right now, I'm like, hey art, I saw you last night. Where did you get that twerk move from you were doing? <laughs> now was that Nicki Minaj no. or was that Beyonce? <laughs> okay, let's just clear this up right now. 
<laughs> I don't know how to twerk. I was not twerking. But <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I know. No. Or no, I'm just kidding. Because we don't even want people to have that image right. in their head. Well, let me that, is, that is not a good look. <laughs> let me clarify that. Art was not twerking, y'all. Uh, it was just funny to me. But no, Art's a great guy. He, uh, he interviewed me. Interviewed me before, gave me a chance to uh, be on Channel 5, so that was cool. I got a lot of hits and uh, compliments off of that, but uh, Channel 5 won't let me have the footage, y'all, so let's do a little writing campaign. Well, don't take it personally. They don't let anybody have <laughs> yeah. the footage. Right. Well, James, yeah. during our show, our text line is open and people text in, and so one of our listeners wants to know, have you ever met Jimmy Buffett? No, no. No, I haven't been on that side of the line yet, <laughs> you know. Margaritaville. No. So I remember years ago when uh, Jennifer and I were doing Today in St. Louis, we had a segment called Website of the Day. Yeah. And we would just try to find cool websites. And one of the websites that we tried to turn our viewers onto was YouTube because mm -hmm. it was brand new. Right. And, it, you know, it was cat videos and just, you know, random stuff. And now it's become an amazing force mm -hmm. you know what have you learned about YouTube um, that's helped you get so many viewers not so much as YouTube it's the content but people got to understand too especially cats in the game but you, you still have to understand the tool and how to make it work right well I'm the tool you know what I'm saying most right. people are not their own tool most bands are just a band well not I don't want to say just a band but they're a band so you have to we have to go in and work it but what bands have to remember too YouTube is actually uh, a record company now. You know, that's why you get copyright claims and all that stuff. So what you do is, like, if you're trying to, if you're trying to break in, first of all, you got to have good content. You know, your videos have to be clean. Sound can be so-so because, like, a lot of times you film in concerts, most cats don't know how to check, uh, set the compression on their camera, so you get all the... Uh, uh, uh. But I've, I've, I know some young ladies who are making millions on YouTube, you know, just doing makeup, mm -hmm. you know, Guys, uh, gamers, you know, yeah. making millions. So, you know, whatever it is you want to do, and whatever your heart desires, you got to have a desire for. You got to have a passion for it. Because if you don't, you're gonna quit. The first time somebody tell you you suck, you quit. <laughs> you know, you got to fight through it. You got to fight through your fear. One of my favorite uh, sayings: "Attack your dreams." I love that because when I'm in trouble in my mind, I can always go back to that. Attack your dream, no matter what, and it pushes me forward. And I got friends that you know always uplifting me. Like I, uh, Tyler Perry, you know, oh, I did the Tyler Perry band when they was just here. You know, stuff like that. And you hear the stories, you know, how uh, their success came. You know, they started off broke, poor, and just doing the thing, kicked out of college, living in mama basement, you know, selling drugs or whatever. But some, somewhere they found their passion and they found an avenue to, to get it out, and Tyler Perry built it up in them. You know, so now these guys, they got a, a, a different band called Simply Irresistible out of Atlanta, corporate band. Man, they make like $40,000 a show, and they do 200 shows a year. You know, that's good money, Art. Even, oh, no for, even for you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that big bank account you sitting on. James Ross, J. Ross TV. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, it was a pleasure to be Always, Miss so Jen. Much. That's good. The website again, one more time. JRossTV.com, and shout out to my guy, E. Big E. <laughs> <laughs> That's Ethan. Yes, sir. <laughs> Come back anytime. It was great to meet you. Thank you, ma'am. I want to tell you about uh, First Community because I recently changed banking institutions after hearing from a couple of friends who had gotten loans from First Community. And